The mind has a habit of loading itself down with all sorts of unnecessary garbage. It's like a phrase they have in Thai, the old woman loading herself down with straw. The story goes that she thought that someday she was going to need some straw for some reason, so everywhere she went she carried this huge load of straw on her back. Of course, she had was bent over, and as a result of that she could never pick up anything that was any better. When she got home, that's all she had was this big load of straw. Everywhere she went, big load of straw, and nothing to show for it. It's like a person who goes camping who tries to prepare for all the possible contingencies, and as a result loads his pack so heavily that he can hardly walk, doesn't get very far. The mind to get someplace has got to learn how to minimize its load, how to get rid of all the things we carry around. Even though we're out here in an extremely peaceful place, we don't keep finding things to weigh the mind down. So it's important to have techniques for letting go, for take, putting down those burdens, those four sublime attitudes that we chant every night. Those are good tools for taking down your load. Start out with thoughts of goodwill. May I be happy. May all living beings be happy. Think about it for a while. Why would you want anyone to suffer? Do you want anyone to suffer? Look down. Be very honest with yourself. Because a lot of the big issues in life are you have a grudge against this person, a grudge against that person, you'd really like to see them get theirs. And yet who's being weighed down by that desire? I mean, the law of karma is going to take care of everything, sooner or later. Of course, we'd, many times we'd like to see it sooner. But that desire right there is just one extra load on the mind. So think about goodwill for a while until you really can reason yourself into why you would want to see everybody happy. I mean, after all, if everybody had true happiness coming welling up from within, nobody would harm anyone else. No one would cheat anyone else. No one would take advantage of anything, anyone else. There would be no reason to if everybody had true happiness. So the direction for peace and well-being in the world is for everyone to be happy from within. So you wish that on everyone, whether the people you like or people you don't like. Don't make your likes and dislikes be a big issue. Dig into each person a little deeper than that to see the part where you can sympathize with their desire for happiness. And the next two attitudes follow immediately on that. If you see someone who's suffering, you would like to see them gain release from that suffering. As for someone who's already happy, you want to make you want to wish them to continue in that happiness. It's funny that that second one, appreciation or sympathetic joy, is the harder of the two. Sometimes compassion is easy because it, we find we putting, we're putting ourselves in a position of being over somebody, looking down on that poor suffering person. Whereas in sympathetic joy, sometimes the people who are happy are people who are in a higher position than we are, or they have a happiness that we don't have yet. And thoughts of envy come up. Well, look at those. Do you really want to think those thoughts? Do you really want to identify with those thoughts? These sublime attitudes are there as measuring sticks against which you want to measure what's actually going on in your mind. In other words, you're not just smothering all the unskillful thoughts in your mind with these nice, warm, fuzzy clouds of thought. You're actually using these as measuring sticks. These are the attitudes that put people into jhana. These are the attitudes that promise who live in jhana. These, this is the attitudes that they have. How do your attitudes measure up against them? And if you find that they don't measure up, well, try to reason yourself until they do. You can't force yourself without reasoning. Same with compassion. Can you feel compassion for someone without having to have a sense of your superiority getting involved? Just simply seeing someone suffer and it hurts your heart. Whether you, again, whether you like that person or don't like that person. If someone is happy, again, it doesn't matter whether you like or don't like the person. Try to make your heart as fair as possible with regard to all beings. And when other thoughts come into the mind that go against these pr principles, you'll, you'll catch them more quickly. You'll see them more easily. In this way, these attitudes become a basis for good concentration basis for developing stillness within the mind. Of course, there are cases where 
when people are suffering, you can't do anything to put an end to their suffering. Or when people are happy, they, they're going to have to lose that happiness. This applies to yourself as well as to other people. This is why equanimity has to be the safety net for all these divine attitudes. Realizing that there's some cases you just can't help, that you have to reflect on the principle of karma. This again is a very useful principle for preparing yourself to meditate. Realizing that you don't have to straighten out the world before you're going to be able to gain awakening, or before you're going to even be able to sit down and meditate. The principle of karma is at work here. Because many times people who've made up their minds to straighten out the world, the things they do to straighten out the world tend to be can get very unskillful. So all you have to do is focus on doing what's skillful. That's all you have to take care of. As for the workings out of everybody else's karma, that will work out on its own without your having to get involved. Your own concern is, what are you going to do that's skillful? The one thing you can do that's skillful right now is to allow the mind to settle down with the breath. You don't have unfinished business with other people that you've got to take care of. Your business right now is to see how skillful you can be in the way you direct your mind. Because if you want true happiness, this is what you've got to do. You're not going to find true happiness by straightening out the world. You can find true happiness by straightening out the mind. Doing skillful things, saying skillful things, thinking skillful things. This is how your world is going to become a better world. And that's not a small, small or narrow-minded idea. You know how many times you read that these poor Hinayanas, all they can think about is their own individual liberation. Well, other Buddhists have more noble, broader aspirations. Well, if you don't clean up your own house, there's no way you're going to be able to clean out anybody else's or, or offer them a good example. Because it, this is the way it works. Each person is suffering because of his or her own, or her own lack of skill. You can't go, skill. You can't go out in and make someone else more skillful. You can show them by example. You can recommend it. And your recommendations have more force if you have the actual example to show them in your own behavior. But this is one of those things that each person has to do for him or herself. Nobody can save anyone else. So the issues that are coming up in your mind right now, those are the ones you've got to deal with. That's your field for skillful work right now. When you have this perspective, it makes it a lot easier to focus on your meditation and do the work that has to be done. There's a passage in the Anguttara that says there are two kinds of fools in the world. Those who take on work that's not their own work, and then those who neglect the work that is their own work. And so look at the mind, the work that your mind has to do. Okay, it's right here in front of you in terms of your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. When you focus on this, you're doing what has to be done, what should be done, the best thing you can do. So these four sublime attitudes are not there just to give a warm, fuzzy feeling to the mind, but to make you reflect. So you get a perspective on what you're doing. When you have perspective, it's a lot easier to keep your focus right in line.